welcome to a tools of the trade video. Today we're zoomed in on my sewing machine because I'm going to be talking about sewing machine accessories and maintenance. The first thing I want to talk about are needles. So let's look at them. These are all sewing machine needles, three different kinds. Found it pretty much every store ever. Um, I have in my collection presently leather needles, microtex needles, and universal needles. But there are a lot more kinds of needles out there. The main things you need to know about needles are their size and the kind of tip that they have, the kind of point. So universal are exactly what it sounds like. They're kind of the generic needle. It's usually what your sewing machine comes with. And you can see it's got all of these sizing numbers on the bottom. The top number are European sizes, the bottom number are US sizes. I don't know why we can't just get along and use the same numbers. Um, but I believe the numbers range from 8 to 18, and the smaller the number, the smaller the needle. You'll want to use a smaller needle for lightweight fabrics, and a heavier needle for heavyweight fabrics. I'll throw up a guide here on the screen showing what goes best with what. So at a universal needle, their tip, uh, the point on a universal needle is going to be good for most things. It'll work on wovens, it'll work on knits, it'll work on a little bit of everything. Okay, then I've also got a microtex needle. A microtex needle is very, very sharp. It's what I use on applique. Um, the, the point is extremely sharp and will pierce the fabric very accurately so that I can make sure I get really crisp lines on my satin stitching. Um, the opposite of a microtex needle is going to be a jersey or a stretch or a knit needle. Um, the point on those needles is going to be very round because instead of piercing the fabric, what they will do is they will kind of poke their way through it because um, you don't want to tear a knit fabric because then it can unravel. So the round point needles used on knits and jerseys have, um, they'll they'll hit the fabric and then just kind of fall through it into their own hole. So you don't want to use a stretch or a knit needle on a woven fabric because woven fabric is so tight the needle is just gonna, it's not gonna go through it. Um, then you have more specialty needles like this is a leather needle, I use it on vinyl as well. Um, and it's gonna be a heavier weight, this one's a 14. So those are your different types of needles. The bigger the number, the thicker the needle, and there are needles for just about every different type of fabric. So if your universal works for most, but if you're using your universal and you're not happy with the results, see if you need a different needle type. Okay, now let's talk about presser feet. Presser feet are these guys that stick onto the bottom of your machine. I've got a really intense one on there right now. This is called a walking foot. Um, and feet are going to look a little different on every machine, um, but this is called a walking foot because you can see those black treads right here. There are feed dogs in the bottom of the machine that will walk fabric through underneath. This walking foot also has feed dogs on top, so it will walk the fabric through on top and bottom. Really great for working with difficult fabrics. But there are sewing machine feet for just about everything. This is your standard sewing machine foot. Just looks like a little foot. And then my machine has a ton of extras. This is a zipper foot. This is an invisible zipper foot. Um, this is an edge stitching foot or a blind hem foot. It works for both. And you can see over here, these are all different feet that do different things. Um, up there on the top, there's a satin stitching foot, a hemming foot, a darning foot, a gathering foot, and that monster down on the bottom is a ruffler foot. It will ruffle fabric for you. So there are a ton of feet out there in the world, and they come in different kinds. Some machines will have them be full, like legs and feet like mine. Some of them, just this bottom piece, will snap on and off and you can trade it with others. But make sure to research what kind of feet your sewing machine can have. I strongly recommend that everyone have a zipper foot, an invisible zipper foot, 
and some kind of foot with a guide on it, um, like my edge stitching foot. These are just super helpful in cosplay. Those are definitely the feet that I use the most. Um, also, if you do a lot of satin stitching, I do recommend that you get a satin stitching foot because if you look right here underneath, it's got these grooves so that when your satin stitching goes through, it doesn't have the foot pressing down on it. Whereas if you were to use a normal foot, your satin stitching would be pressed up against here and can often get caught under the foot and it's very annoying. So those are just some of my favorite feet. Okay, now I'm going to talk briefly about sewing machine maintenance. Now, this is going to be different for every sewing machine, but I'm actually going to focus on what I learned about mine. The first thing I want to talk about is needles again. When I bought my machine, um, I, it came with a series of classes, and I learned about how often you should replace a needle. I used to be of the mind that you replaced a needle when it broke. This is a terrible strategy. Um, even if a needle isn't broken, if it's slightly bent or dull, it can actually damage the inside workings of your machine, which is a terrible way to go. So they told me that you should replace your needle about every six hours of sewing. So that's kind of hard to um, measure if you're not sewing for six hours straight, but just kind of keep that in your mind that your needle needs to be replaced every six hours. I think mine are actually due for replacing, so why don't I pop one of those in right now? The next thing I wanna talk about is cleaning your machine. Now, every machine will be cleaned slightly differently, um, but there are still a couple basic things that all machines have in common. The first is that you should clean your machine. The best way to clean your machine is with a little brush like this, it will usually come with a sewing machine and it's got these plastic brish bristles whose job is to catch little dust bits. So this is actually from my old Singer machine. And I'm going to show you how I clean this machine. So I actually have to remove my foot again, raise my needle all the way up, and I'm going to turn the light on so you can see what's happening. Ta-da! Alright, now in my machine, the way that you clean it is this, take a step back, this compartment opens. This is where my bobbin lives. Um, and I'm going to take out the bobbin and then I'm going to release these gears under here. Like I said, every machine is going to be done slightly differently. There we go. Now you can actually see what's happening. Um, and then this piece comes out. Okay. And then if I, so on my last machine, this piece was actually screwed down. So you'd have to unscrew it. This machine's a little more intuitive. It's got a press point right here. That helps it pop off. And then I'm just gonna take this plastic brush and clean up around here. Now I, I clean this regularly, so there's not a lot in there, but often there will be a lot of fibers, especially if you're working with a fluffy fabric um, that get caught in here. And it's just really important to clean out all of that dust. Um, the plastic bristles on this brush will attract the dust, so it'll get stuck to the bristles. And then I just clean off the bristles and I keep going. The second thing pretty much all sewing machines need is to be oiled. And you'll want to make sure you're getting the right kind of oil. Get it from a uh, official dealer. Tell them what kind of sewing machine you have. See what kind of oil it needs. And then figure out where it needs to be oiled. In my machine, it's down there in the bobbin case. So I actually spin this around. And then I take my little dripper. I reach it back in the back and I just, you just put like one or two drops back there. And then after everything is done, you reassemble the machine. It's not a ton of work, um, but it will extend the life of your machine and make it so that you don't have to take it in for maintenance as often. And that is awesome. Um, I was told by the people who sold me my machine, a little dust in there. I was told by the people who sold me my machine that um, you're going to want to oil your machine about every two bobbins. So every two times your bobbin runs out, you probably need to oil your machine. Okay, I hope that helped. Like I said, a lot of these things do apply to my specific machine, but a lot of them are universal. You need to make sure that you're replacing your needle, using the right kind of needle, 
Um, see what presser feet are out there to make your life easier. Keep your machine clean, oil it regularly. You'd be surprised how often um, frustration in sewing comes from something as simple as using the wrong needle or not having a clean machine. So here's hoping you're having some happy crafting. <laughs>